Devil May Cry 3 slaps hard. It slaps harder than Will Smith. This 17-year-old game has barely aged, goddammit. It's so good it doesn't even feel like a PS2 title. Simple, yet deep combat, cum splattering music, hot babes, goofy characters, batshit crazy cutscenes. Has it all, baby. DMC2 was an abominable disaster. This one improves upon that pile of shit in every aspect imaginable. Remember the bland, uninteresting areas of DMC2? Well, here you'll be navigating through actually well-designed environments. One of them is a giant Veil's intestines, for fuck's sake. The platforming is no longer excruciating. Dante isn't depressed anymore. Instead, he's the wackiest motherfucker on the planet. DMC3 isn't comically easy like DMC2, but it's also not so crushingly hard like the first three hours of DMC1. Unless we're talking about the Western release of the game on PS2, which is probably one of the hardest video games known to man. Devil May Cry 3 introduced amazing gameplay mechanics like the style system, with each style giving you new moves and tricks. And most importantly, Unlike the previous game, it has an actual story, and it's pretty fucking good! It starts with the iconic cutscene of the two brothers, Dante and Virgil, having an epic anime fight under the rain, which concludes with Virgil impaling his brother with a sword two times. Cut to black. Flashback time. Dante is chilling at his place, eating some pizzas, until he gets a wizard from Agent 47 who tells him to accept some kind of invitation from Virgil. But before Dante can say anything, he disappears and summons a bunch of very sad demons that proceed to rudely impale our lovely pizza enjoyer with multiple sights. Yeah, this happens a lot in this series. But Dante, being the mad lad that he is, is completely unfazed by this mere inconvenience and starts fucking their shit up. He takes a bunch of them down using their own blades that are still stuck in his body, he sarks on one of them while attacking the rest, he throws a bunch of billiard balls at them and shoots one of the balls to... Wait, what the fuck? Anyway, after he defeats all of the attackers, a giant tower suddenly comes out of fucking nowhere in the middle of the city. No, the Earth didn't get a massive boner. Virgil has been a bad boy. He has activated a great demonic tower in order to open a portal to hell and consume his father's power. Why? He wants more power. That's like... His thing, you know? Okay, back to Dante. He sees the tower and realizes this is the invitation the bald guy was talking about, so he decides to pay a visit. This is where most of the game takes Hi, place bitch. in. On his way to his brother, Dante faces hundreds of demons, including the Seven Hells, which are based on the Seven Deadly Sins, a bunch of fucking chess pieces, spiders, these guys have too much health, some dipshits with shields that he can only kill by attacking them from behind, enigmas who like to constantly throw energy bolts at you in the middle of the fight. Always kill these little shits first. These Octopus thingies, which are invincible until you turn your back on them. Blood goils. To take these things down, you have to first turn them into stones by shooting their ass. If you don't do this, these shitheads will just copy paste themselves. And let's not forget the fallen. Fighting these shredder looking monstrosities is a slog. Their wings protect them from any damage and it's hard to break them because they constantly fly around. They have annoying attacks, too much health and there is only one effective way to kill them. And that's by jumping in the air and using this attack. Fighting the fallen is the definition of not fun. Getting rejected by your crush is more fun than fighting the fallen. Stubbing your toe on the edge of a corner is more fun than fighting the fallen. Doing a tailing mission in Assassin's Creed is more fun than fighting the fallen. Even playing DMC2 is more fun than fighting the fallen. Actually, I take that last part back. Fuck that game. All I wanna say is, Devil May Cry 3 has too many annoying enemies which become even more annoying on higher difficulties. So many of them break the flow of combat because you need specific strategies to kill them. And this isn't something exclusive to common enemies. Even some of the boss fights suffer from this issue. For example, the best way to beat the doppelganger boss is to destroy some barriers and shine light on him, then attack him while he's incapacitated. That's it! That's the entire fight! Now that we're talking about boss fights, let's also introduce Dante's arsenal. Because you get 4 out of the 5 melee weapons of the game by defeating bosses and absorbing their essence or soul or whatever the fuck it is. Cerberus is an Nunchaku fused with the power of ice that you get by defeating this very angry dog with three heads. This thing is actually one of the hardest bosses in DMC3. The first real boss of the game. Yeah, this guy doesn't count. Agni and Ruda are a pair of talking sentient swords that have the powers of wind and fire. You get them as a weapon by defeating them as a boss. Beowulf is a set of gauntlets and greaves that deals higher amount of damage than the rest of your weapons, but it's also slower. At some 
some point in the game, you have to defeat this ugly-ass creature. After beating him, he escapes from you like a pussy. But later, Virgil brutally murders him and uses him as a weapon in one of his boss fights against you. You'll obtain the weapon after this battle. Another weapon you get is Nevin, which is actually a hot naked fish that you shoot in the gut and convert into a fucking electric guitar that shoots bats. How does that even work? Oh, there's also Rebellion, which is a sword you start the game with. Don't let it being your starting weapon fool you though. Rebellion is amazing. It's the best weapon for crowd control and has a lot of cool moves like the Stinger. 28 Stab like the previous Devil May Cry's, Dante also has a bunch of ranged weapons, like his trademark pistols, Ebony and Ivory, which deal little damage but are good for doing combos and being stylish as fuck at the same time. Later in the game you can find the Spiral, which is a large caliber rifle with a very long firing animation. Another weapon you can find when exploring is Artemis, which is a... Uh, to be honest, I don't know what the fuck it is exactly, but its damage output is pretty good. There's also a shotgun, which is good for hitting multiple enemies. It can also kick some enemies back, but in my opinion, its damage is too weak and there are other weapons that can outclass it pretty easily. Like the Kalina N, which is a multitask rocket launcher you get from one of the main characters called Lady, who borrows it to Dante after he defeats her in a boss battle. It's a very annoying fight by the way. Now that we got the weapons out of the way, let's focus on the remaining bosses. Other than the ones I mentioned previously, there is Grayon, which is a demonic horse capable of freezing time for a few seconds. There's also the giant whale I talked about in the beginning of the video. Now you might expect some kind of epic fight with the big boy, but you'll end up fighting a bunch of testicles that have like three total moves combined. Then we have Jester, the society man himself. This doofus has some of the best scenes in the game, along with some really fun boss fights. The next boss I want to talk about is Agent 40... I mean Arkham. This man has by far the most stupid fucking boss fight in the game. He's such a cheap asshole and he gets worse on higher difficulties. Allow me to explain. For starters, he's just a fucking blob. His moves are either uninspired or plain bullshit. There's no way to even see some of his attacks coming until they've already hit you. He also does this thing where he leaves the fight and summons a bunch of fucking dolphins which are extremely annoying to deal with if you don't use the rocket launcher. And the funny thing is, no matter how flawlessly you fight them, these fuckers will find a way to gang up on you. But wait, there's more. About halfway through the fight, Virgil will come to help you defeat him. On theory, this should be a good thing, right? Right? It's not! Virgil will replace both your style and your devil trigger. Fuck. And let me tell you something. You don't want Virgil to replace your style and your devil trigger. This is one of the worst trade-offs in the history of gaming. Devil trigger makes your attacks faster and stronger. Each style gives you a shitload of new moves. Virgil doesn't even hit his target half of the time. They take away two of your most powerful abilities for this. The only boss left is Virgil himself. And believe me, he isn't even half as incompetent when he's fighting against you. You fight him three times, with each one ending an act of the story. Virgil has the best boss fights in the game. The boss areas are fantastic, especially the first one. And to top it off, these fights have some of the best soundtracks of the game. As I mentioned before, Devil May Cry 3 has a style system. Each one of them drastically alter the gameplay by changing the purpose of the circle button. Some of them give you entire new movesets for your swords and guns. And some of them give you crazy ass abilities like being able to create clones of yourself, teleport in the middle of combat, block enemy attacks like a freaking judo master, or even slow down time itself. Other than Quicksilver and Doppelgagger, you can upgrade the rest of your styles by killing enemies while having them equipped. There are three style levels, with each level making them more reliable and fun to use. Reaching level 2 is easy, because you only need 30,000 XP for it. But reaching level 3 needs an astronomical 90,000! You almost need an entire playthrough to fully upgrade one style. We get it, Capcom. You wanted to increase the game's replay value, but what the shit? Styles aren't the only things you can upgrade. You can also use red orbs to increase the damage of your ranged weapons or unlock new moves for your melee ones. One of the main ways to get red orbs is by killing demons, and here's where things get interesting. The higher your style rank when you kill an enemy, the more red orbs you'll get. What's a style rank? 
Style ranks measure how stylish you are in combat. You have to constantly use different techniques and weapons if you want to get a high rank. Be careful not to get hit in the process, as that will annihilate your style rank and banish it to the darkest depths of Tartarus. Another way to acquire red orbs is by getting a high overall That's rank on a mission. A mission rank is based on five things. The time it takes to finish it, the amount of red orbs you collect, your stylish rank, the damage you take from enemies, and the amount of items you use. DMC3 encourages you to play better by severely punishing you for not performing well. Every time you buy an item, it becomes more expensive until it reaches its price cap. If the player fails to maintain a high star rank or get decent mission ranks, they get less orbs, which means no more swanky upgrades for their weapons. This makes the game even harder for players that are already struggling. <laughs> Devil May Cry 3 improved DMC1's Dante and turned him into one of the greatest gaming protagonists of all time. This game's Dante can make the most mundane tasks look badass and stylish. I mean, look at the way this man answers a fucking phone. Dante isn't the only cool playable character in DMC3. You can also play as Virgil, who has his own set of weapons and a unique style which increases the campaign's replay value even more. But if you ever get bored of it, you can always play the Bloody Palace game mode. I wanted to finish DMC3 once and move on to another game. But this shit is so addicting, I ended up finishing it six times in a row on every difficulty. Hunting that platinum trophy like a goddamn maniac, you're looking at a DMC3 warlord. If DMC1 laid the foundations of the hack and slash genre, DMC3 took it to the next fucking level. It saved the franchise after DMC2's mess and finally gave it its own identity. I think the lesson we can all learn from Devil May Cry 3 is always more feminine to electric guitars that shoot bass.